As a matter of formality, shall I move it? No, wait a minute. Okay. We get them all covered here. Yeah, move. Hey, Tim, you're going to move Article 12 for discussion? Madam Chair, if I may. I'll second that. Move to Article 12 as written with the support of Brian Lapham as my second. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Wow. I'm sure you see your recognition as well. <laughs> I gave it to him already. Go ahead. How would you like to proceed? Well, give us an overview. We have the details on it, but why don't you run us through them? Sure because we just recently got them. So I, I would suggest to you that we, we take a look at the two fire together. They're identical. That way you can move forward if you wish. Um, essentially, I'll give you an overview of all the CBAs. We come before you tonight with five collective bargaining agreements, two in the fire, two in police, one in Teamsters. The two you brought forward first are the fire. Um, we spent uh, approximately five months with all of the units negotiating. Uh, the board had set its priorities of what um, was a guidance to the negotiating committee. Um, our primary focus was to try and uh, deal with the language related to the Cadillac tax. That was sort of our cornerstone <clears throat> as we went through it. And as you know, during negotiations, there's back and forth. In the end, we reached agreements um, with three of the unions regarding the Cadillac tax. Uh, with the two fire unions, we were not able to reach agreement on language regarding the Cadillac tax. Um, subsequently, the board gave us direction to go back and see if we could do a one-year extension, if we could reach agreement, and we were able to do so. So before you are two contracts, one for the firefighters, one for the supervisors. It is a one-year contract, and there are only two items that change from the current contract. One is a COLA for one year of 1.75%. The other is language dealing with what was and is the existing sick bank. There are a number of items in there that there was a memorandum of under or agreement reached earlier in the year with the Board of Selectmen. There were some issues that came up with regard to that language and clarity, some calculations on um, how many hours uh, can be involved in arrears and uh, operational issues. That was signed earlier. We incorporated that in the final agreement of both cases here as well. We recommend that that's a good thing to do. So those are the fire contracts as an overview. There's only two changes to the existing contract in a one-year deal. Is there anything unique about Article 12 that you'd like to say? Uh, no, I don't, I don't believe so. The calculations, the format follows what has historically been, um, and it indicates both the breakdown, because as, as you'll see these, there's, because we are April expiration dates, there are 39 weeks in one year, 13 weeks in the other year, and it breaks it out to show our, our public exactly how much we'll be spending each of those years, and subsequently what the total is over the life of that contract. Again, in this case, they're one-year contracts. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I got a question for you. Uh, if that's all right with the chair. <laughs> He's joking, Mike, to see. <laughs> she is the chair. I'm just trying to play ball. <laughs> got to play ball here. Um, at last, I thought that would be postponed to 2020. It, it, it's, it had. It, it is, yes. Under the law, it was recently with the budget deal was pushed off, yeah. So... We didn't know that when we were negotiating. Oh, so at this point in time, hindsight's 2020, we wouldn't have to work with that at all on a one-year contract. No, in fact, we had reached agreements with three of the units uh, prior to that bill, that, you know, that, that discussion coming up. Um, and again, with uh, uh, the fire unit, we weren't were able to reach an agreement at the end. Okay, thank you. On the ballot, will the language of the agreements be spelled out or no, no and historically it's not we've handed it out to you it'll be on the website for folks to do we'll talk about it at town meeting the cost items are required to be noticed in the warrant article and that's what you see <coughs> the omnibus legislation that uh, delayed the implementation Correct. of Obamacare's Cadillac tax is not guaranteed to remain in effect next year or next month or whatever Another piece of omnibus legislation could very well bring it back. Well, whatever it is. So, it is. Yep. The fact that the chief, or excuse me, Jamie Sullivan, uh, has been having it on the table regardless of that status is noteworthy. Mm -hmm. All right. And as I understand, I would note the board of selectmen set well, the priorities. Along with those We're who just are, the committee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Along with those mm -hmm. who are standing behind you strongly and firmly. Uh, 
He didn't say how far back, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, the point is that even on the, the one-year deal where they couldn't get the proper language, I will call we it proper. Reach, I will call we weren't it able to reach language. agreement on the, on the issues. That's correct. The language that you did get in the, other, in the three-year deals was the proper language, as you described it at the board select meeting Monday night. In fact, you described the same language that FAU 90 uh, used in theirs, which uh, this committee, and I certainly applauded that language. And uh, the fact that the one-year contract speaks to it not at all is a good thing rather than something rather adverse to the town taxpayers. The only thing I caution is I haven't read SEU 90's language, so I don't know if it's exactly the I same. Either, but the, that's purpose, the, the purpose is there. <laughs> the purpose is exactly the same. The presentation that you gave at the board of I saw this. With the way they came before. Like wonderful word. Right, but again, I haven't read the language, so I, I don't want to say it's exactly. Them. <laughs> Probably not, because I wrote it, so... Uh, <laughs> no, I made your presentation. Yes, sir. Okay. Do Sonny? you want us to move this all in one no, mass, or what? Sonny's got a question. Not done yet. One quick question. Yes, sir. Is there any discussion during the negotiation about the fact that the, the town's liability for the pension funds are going to show up now? Pension funds are a state issue. I understand. They were not anything we discussed at the table. Yeah. Okay. Because I mean, I mean, it's a reality that everybody knows about the financial realities of that, but well, that yeah. is not an issue we can deal with at the table and have any effect. It's a state I issue. Know whether it was raised at all. Yeah. Okay. Everybody's well aware of yeah, all of the constraints I, that we all deal with. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. If we've killed this one, yeah. and are we? We're voting for the both yeah. the same. So we might as well just vote well, once. Want to move Article 13 as well? Yeah. yeah. I'll move Article 13 as written. Second. And I move that we vote for Article 12 and 13 collectively. Second. All right. All those in favor? Opposed? One, in, one opposed. Mm. On both? Yes. All the above. I oppose to combining them. I'm opposed to the voting on each one, et cetera. So there's actually three issues there to vote on. Oh, keep moving. Can I move Article 14 now, Manager? And I would suggest you do 14 and 15 again. The next two are the police, the patrolmen, and sergeants. Again, similar issues within the contract. It would make sense if you'd like suggestion to Suggestion well taken. So, Madam Chair, may I move yes. Article 14 and 15? Second. As written. Second. So these two deal with the police officers and the sergeants, two separate contracts, but represented by the same group. Uh, again, the primary cornerstone of our focus was dealing with the Cadillac tax language. We were able to reach agreement. Um, I'll go through quickly. Again, you have it in front of it. Do you want me to go through the detail, Madam Chair, or do you want to do you want to just deal with the larger issues? How would you like to approach it? Uh, I'd like. Might as well give us the details, too, Very so good. we're fully informed. Thank you. So on the documents you have in front of you, you'll see on the web pages, again, where it's two contracts, there's two sections. There's Article 12, Section 4, for example, in the first. Then in parentheses, there's Article 11, Section 4. Those refer to patrolmen and sergeants, and it follows through the logic there. <coughs> um, we have made an agreement that in the prior contract, uh, there are officers that on the midnight shift, due to prior agreement, uh, are able to work out during their lunch break. Instead of having their lunch break, they can go down to the fitness room if they wish. We've added to allow the detectives and prosecutors who work in there to do the same thing. Essentially, they take their lunch break in there, but they're, they're immediate, uh, subject to immediate recall. No financial impact on that <coughs> issue. Um, this is an issue that, that was brought up at discussions dealing with, we have a number of folks who retire from full-time service who then want to stay on as part-time officers. And we've got a number of them that have done that. And what has happened in the past in seniority is you get plugged in based on your date of hire, your natural amount of seniority. The union and, and we had some discussions because there's some consideration, frankly, between the full-time service and part-time. Essentially, 28 years of full-time service should be credited as the thought process higher than someone who serves 28 years part-time, just 10 weeks in the summer. So uh, the agreement was that basically all those folks who retire from full-time service, who remain on, will go to their appropriate place above all the other part-time guys. That's the agreement that, that we've reached. Again, it's not a cost item. All those people are still on there eligible for overtime. It's just a, a procedural issue that, that the union was interested in that we agreed to. Um, there was a couple of things throughout. There's some language issues that have been in the contract for a number of years. They're just things that needed to be fixed. This next section, Article 13, Section 8, is a language issue. There was a missing word in there. We've fixed that. Um, 
the new section has been added. This was as part of our discussion with the Cadillac tax. Uh, we have created a an opportunity for officers. Currently, they just if you have an extra shift or something, it's paid at overtime, time and a half. Um, there's been an agreement to create a comp time bank. Instead of taking overtime, the officer can choose to take compensation time, more earned time. Um, so we cap that at no more than 40 hours, and it must be used in a six-month period. Chief was in favor of doing this, uh, so we made the agreement. In some cases, we think that may save some overtime for us because we don't fill all overtime. Somebody can take more time, work that out. Again, they have to use it within six months, um, and it's going to be treated much like their vacation is and how they'll have to notice to take it, that type of thing. Um, the next section deals with recognizing our part-time officers. There was a discussion. Uh, they, they get their pay, but they don't have any other stuff. For folks that serve, we've agreed more than five years or five years or more of service, worked 40 shifts at least, basically their required shifts, the prior summer, they'll receive one eight-hour personal day opportunity for the summer they're working. So basically you're recognizing them by giving them an eight-hour shift off, after five years of service, we thought it was a very reasonable thing to do to recognize our long-serving uh, part-timers. Now, keep in mind, as Chief Sawyer has reported to you a number of times that I have in the past, there aren't all that many left that have more than five years of service. We've got a whole bunch on the upper level, but quite frankly, with the number of part-timers we currently have, this isn't really a big number at all. I mean, we're, we're dealing with small numbers here. Um, Again, as we discussed in the fire contract, the police unit is involved in that sick bank as well. We incorporated those word changers and language issues in here as well. Um, the, the other significant thing in here, there are several things in that sick bank. Again, deals with the calculation of hours, eliminates reference to a, a panel that's never been used in the life of the, the discussions. Um, it, it cleans up some language that led to a conflict previously about how you enter the sick bank and also establishes the ability to transition folks who are out on sick bank back to work in a light duty status. It's a lot of data that shows that that is beneficial to both the job and the employees. We want to get people back to work. We want them working full time as quickly as we can and that connection the data shows is good. So we made that agreement as well. Um, Again, this is the next section on 19 is a language change. That RSA 281A15 was transcribed improperly. It was 218 previously, so we just fixed the language there. Again, this is an increase of difference. Currently, if someone opts out of our medical plans, which we know are very expensive to the town, there is a, a, a payment to them for opting out of that. They go on their wife's plan or another plan. Um, in some cases, we have younger officers who stay on and remain on their parents' plan. If they opt out, they were currently given a stipend or an amount, as long as they show they're on other, other uh, insurance. Um, I want to say it's of currently of $500, $750, and 1000 for the single two-person family. Mm -hmm. Those numbers have been increased. That hasn't been changed in many years. Those numbers, again, as a part of our discussions, have been increased to 2000 3000 or 4000 and again, and I would remind us that several of these family plans are in the $29,000 range, give or take, up or down from there, depending on the plan you pay. So it's still a relatively no, no, low number, but we felt it was appropriate as part of our Cadillac tax discussion. This was one of our side's concession towards that. Then we get into the section dealing with the health plans and the Cadillac tax. And essentially what we've done here is said, when and if that Cadillac tax is imposed, one of two things is going to occur. The member is either going to move to a plan that falls under, and, and again, I, I don't, I'll start that no one knows what the Cadillac tax is. That's part of the, the Affordable Care Act that says for so-called high-cost plans, it sets a threshold level. And for those that are above the threshold level, 40%, there'll be a 40% tax levied upon that amount that is above the threshold. So if the threshold says 30000 it's a $32,000 plan. On that $2,000, there's a 40% tax. The risk is and has been, we expect that tax is going to come back and hit the taxpayer. So our goal was to prevent that. When we used the calculator that was supplied by um, you know, the, uh, the trust, I calculated different units. And again, that is not based on the dates and our increases. There's a bunch of things and assumptions you need to make. These were big numbers. 
We have a lot of high cost plans. We have a lot of employees. And those numbers climb very quickly. That's why it was so important for us to prevent the taxpayer from the risk of that. That's what our belief is. So now what we've done in the agreements is said, okay, if that Cadillac tax takes effect, and again, keep in mind those that we reached agreement on, we didn't know it got kicked down the road again. We thought it was 2018. Um, they're going to either move to a plan that falls below the threshold and therefore wouldn't activate the tax, or if they choose to stay on that plan, the individual will be responsible for any of that tax as we know it, it hits us, okay? That was our goal. Um, so uh, both the police units were the first to reach agreement on that with us. Um, and in addition, there's some other language in here, but, but basically that's what it does. It covers that issue. Um, there's a uniform language change, detectives, and only detectives, I think there's six of them. They're required to have both uniforms and plain clothes or suits available to them. Um, there was a request to give them an additional amount above, I think it's 750 currently, another 250 for them to be able to achieve having the suits and what have you. Made logical sense to us, so we agreed to that as well. Um, again, the next section deals with just language issues. Um, and then finally, the big two is duration. There was three years and it was 3% COLA increase, no other changes, 333 over the three years. That is the overview of that tentative agreement. Before you are the calculations on the warrant articles of the exact cost of that over the three years. Be happy to answer any questions. And uh, you should note that uh, one of the provisos under the ACA language is that it's specifically stated that's the intent of the parties that this uh, language will, will be a permanent sure. part of the agreement. Mm -hmm. And in both cases, that's the case. It is it is a permanent part unless it's negotiated differently in the future. And these have been ratified? By all, all these five have been ratified by the union, just men, and approved by the selectmen. Tim, then Jerry. I'm looking at the detailed pages on unnumbered page number three on the bottom. <clears throat> the last uh, full sentence on a full line. Says uh, less health care plans whose total premiums are below the ACA threshold for police. The, you get the four police. Plans. Right. Uh, in the ACA, there are two different groups. So police and fire have a higher threshold, as do retirees, because they, um, as they crafted it, they see those as they are higher risk. So therefore, they're assuming that those plans are going to be higher cost because there's more injuries in police and fire than there are, say, in town workers. So basically, uh, Obamacare did some carve-outs within the Cadillac tax world. It has two different level thresholds currently. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Chair? Yeah. Why did, why, Chief, or oh, Chief? <laughs> Uh, Jamie's fine. Jamie, yeah. Why, why did we feel it necessary to boost the payout for insurance as if, in fact, they don't take it? I mean, the only person that I see that wouldn't take insurance is the person that's under their wife's plan or maybe some other plan. But most of the people are going to stay. They have to absolutely have to have insurance. So this is, I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't know what benefit we, we see by raising these two, three, and 4,000. I mean, I got to believe that if 10 people are taking it today, 10 people will take it tomorrow. I don't think anybody can change as a result of this. And, and I, I follow your same logic, and we had that discussion. Yeah. As you know, in every negotiation, there's a give and take. Mm -hmm. And currently, within the police units, I think there are only two members. We discussed that very thing of what incentive. But as you go through that, when it comes to finalizing language, they're very small dollars. We have two people, one's a single, one's a, a double, and I think the total cost of that currently, Jerry, is I think it was a, a three or four thousand dollar increase over what we currently pay. And as we went through the numbers, we looked and said, should that be a, a stopgap for us? There's still, we've seen plans that share percentages of that double number. I've seen some as high as ten thousand dollars on the on the other from other units and other discussions we've had. We felt, and I agree with you, it's a discussion we had. We still felt it's a reasonable number. I agree. There's not necessarily any indication that someone else may take it, but one does it certainly pays for itself we see what we're seeing a lot to be honest with you is a lot of the new kids coming on who could take it they're still you got, young they're healthy, young you know but, but they stay because God. the ac on mom and dad's plan till 26. well yeah <laughs> and so we've seen that already a change in public works an individual doing that and some other units that's so true they could I, be under yeah and you know what that incentive 
we have heard that. It makes a difference. You know, if you're looking at, you're a new employee, you're looking at the number there, that might make them jump to instead of, or, hey, I have my own. I don't have to hit my parents. We think, no, seriously, it's a, it's a reasonable discussion. Yeah. In the end, we looked at it as, quite frankly, yes, I agree with your logic, but they were small dollars, and we didn't see that as a place to stop our negotiation because of it. Hmm. I mean, you would think that the reality of today's costs with respect to this would, would not have even prompted that kind of discussion. Again, I've seen those in other places where they give so much higher, Jerry, because they want to try and make it a true, I've seen 50-50s. Tough decisions. 50-50s, you know, and, they and make it a we didn't want to go there, so. But, I would uh, think anyone taking this option is saving us money. It, it is, no question. It absolutely pays for itself in every case. Yeah. Uh, and as I understand it, you're, the, the uh, Agreement is for 3%, 3%, 3%. That is correct. Over three years, correct. Three years. Every three, uh, well, over three years. 3% three each, each year over year three years. Over the three years, <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, that's the only two questions I had. All right, Michael. Uh, yes, I'm having a little problem with the numbers there on these uh, two. Uh, when you add uh, 72 to 110, that comes up to about 182,000 that it will cost you at the end of 16. And then when you add 114 to that, that's uh, even more. And then you add 26,000 well, to that. You, you just did two numbers that don't fit. So let's do two things, Mike, if I can. I think I know where you're going with it. Mm -hmm. So here's the way it works. Um, in the first, in 2016, Mm -hmm. The data that you're seeing, the 72, if you add up 72, 110, 114, and 26, it's the 323 and change. In the first year, what we're noticing folks of is the total amount that that in, because keep in mind, it, it's above the 2015 for that. It's 39 weeks in 2016. We're saying this is the amount it's going to cost you in 2016. It's only 39 weeks because it takes effect April 1. So that's why that number's there. Then in 2017, it's a full 52 weeks. That's mm -hmm. that 110 number you're looking at. Right. Okay. Then in 18, it's 114. Again, full 52 weeks. Mm -hmm. Then they expire on March 31st. So in mm -hmm. 19, the end of the third year, okay. it's 26,353. I got you. Okay. Across I have the no full problem period. With that. So I, I'm, that I must have missed your question. Okay. My question is at the very end of the one article, 323,996. Mm hmm. That's only if you add up only the numbers mentioned, mentioned in the four lines above. That's correct. And the right. verbiage in there says over the 16 level, over the 17 level, over the 18 level. So in theory, the way it's worded, it should be 72 plus 110 equals the cost for 16 plus the, the, for, for 18 it'd be 72, 110 and 114 for the 18 mm -hmm. cost. That's the way it's worded. No, I, well, I disagree with you. Well, it says over the le level before, Chief. Right, so what it's saying is the Warren article down here is saying in 2016, mm -hmm. we're going to increase over our current budget by 72616 I got that. Okay. The next year in 17, it's going to increase an additional 110 over that number. So that number is, that's why you see on the, the right side, mm -hmm. over... The 50, you got 15 level, the next is over the 16 level, the next okay. is over 7. So, so we're noticing folks with each year that it increase. Right. So when you do the total cost of the 323, you're missing a whole bunch. I don't believe we are, not at all. If you add up all those three numbers, sir, no, you're, you're, you're only more. adding up the overages. You're not adding up the basic cost every year. What we're... The additional cost. I do see his point. It's a discussion we had with... Uh, outside counsel of how to do it. The actual numbers, and I get exactly what you're saying. We've had this discussion. Mm -hmm. We've had this reviewed by counsel, by outside counsel, to be sure we're doing it appropriately. Mm -hmm. And what we're noticing here is in the past it had said over the 15 level. So what we're saying is each year, mm -hmm. notice it because the first year what we're asking folks to vote on is the 16 level. In the future it's going to drop in, and it's saying the additional 110 over the 16 level. The 114 is over that next, that previous level. Each one, we're stacking them up is what we're doing in the language there. But it makes that last sentence. Incorrect. The additional cost of the agreement in salaries and benefits for the three years. Mm-hmm. The ad additional to what, I guess? Additional to the 2015 level? Right. Yeah. 
Yes. But, but the total, what's that saying is the total cost over the three years as calculated is 323996 But that's totally incorrect because you, to get the cost for 17, you're going to have to add 72 and 110. The cumulative cost two point that into that into seventeen will be seventy two and one. So seventy two will drop into the budget. Yeah, and, right? you, and in six, you're absolutely right. That drops into the budget when sixteen and it's approved. Mm -hmm. That seventy two drops into the budget. So when we go to the next year, mm -hmm. there's an additional one ten, and you're absolutely right above that. But that's already in the budget. The total additional cost is one ten. That's what we're saying here. But that, I get what you're. I understand the exactly what you're saying. Say the cumulative change every year. It says the total cost. The word the wording has got you stuck there. That's okay. what I think. And again, all I can tell you is I we've had this them. vetted, but we've had this vetted, signed. it's the they same language. So. No, they didn't agree to this workout. This well, is the voters. This you're, has, you're interpreting it differently. No, the, the tentative agreement is not, this is not part of the tentative agreements. I'm saying that this is a one article they're asking the voters to, put this, to uh, vote on, Sonny. It has nothing to do with what you're inferring. I'm looking back to previous years. Yep. It's been the accumulated amount every year. Actually, the math, that we went back and looked very closely at mm -hmm. that. The math isn't. The math is exactly the same. The wording is different. We did the wording to show exactly what the math is showing. You're absolutely right, Mike. It's, it's a long discussion we had. It, it is a back and forth that we did. We actually went out. Mark had us go out to outside council to review it, and they have indicated based on many other towns that do it an expert that they spoke to felt that this was an appropriate way as long as we're noticing them the language the way we're doing it and additional cost over each year that's what we're trying to convey but the bottom line of the article says the additional cost for three years is you've left out half of it so that's a misleading statement it, and I, I hear that, your that point that is factually incorrect I, I disagree I, our math disagrees Christie's taking a look at it I take your point. We'll go back and look again. But that's where we are. If you add it up the way we normally done it in the past, the cost of the taxpayer is going to be approaching somewhere in the neighborhood of eight hundred thousand dollars, rather than the three hundred, as you're saying. Again, finance gave us the numbers. We've consulted with outside folks. I can tell you, Mike, that that's the number we've come to. I get exactly what you're saying. We've had that discussion. I think we'll go back and do it again. But I, I we've had that discussion, and this was vetted by folks that say this is the way to notice it. No, no problem with that. But the Alton Bay thing, where you have to have it exposed, the true cost of taxpayers. This doesn't. This does not pass muster on that, at all. So noted. <clears throat> what do you think, of, of Mr. Uh, Town Attorney Mark? What do you think? This is uh, an area that uh, we, as, as Jamie said, I, I specifically requested that this go out to others outside who, who price this up all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I actually wasn't involved in the pricing in the prior year because that was Wanda on the team. I can't ask her. So anyway, this is, this is what the answer came back as. Then you can make that statement at the end of the warrant being incorrect like that? Well, additional cost is what that refers to, and uh, outlined above are what the additional costs are each year. So what you're saying is it's a word game for the voters because we haven't had this problem before. Ever since we've been doing the Alton Bay, whatever that. So it's precisely following what it's been reviewed by DRA. It's been reviewed by outside counsel. DRA approved this format. Yeah, they did. Wow. I have the question about in DRA we trust anymore. I had to remove that from my little line, I guess, if they've approved it. Okay. Tim and then Nick. Um, <clears throat> Thank you, Mike. As I understand this discussion, we've got, I'm looking at out of 14 as my example, we've got four years delineated as an increased cost over the prior year. Correct. And what the total cost refers to is adding up those four numbers. That is correct. <laughs> and it's purporting that those four numbers represent the entire cost of the agreement. That is my understanding. Yes. The additional cost over 15. The additional cost over, yes. Cost over year to year to be specific. It the doesn't additional say that. cost of the agreement in salaries and benefits for the three years. That's the total cost for the three year deal. Yes. But what I'm hearing is. Some would argue that it should be a running total as opposed to. 
And again, all I can tell you is we've had this discussion. We've gone to outside this, experts. It really needs to be looked at, I, Christy. I think that you absolutely agree. Wanda's formula could be derived from looking at her Warren articles. You could easily see how the numbers were done there, and you could derive what formula she used. So math is done the same. Math is exactly the same. Exactly Did you derive the, the formula from a, from yeah, a Wanda Dunn was, Warren article? Yeah. yeah. You did. Math is the same. Okay. Well, you exactly how we've done it in the past. The language is different because we felt the way it said before wasn't an accurate reflection of what the numbers represented, and that's what we went out to outside council to confirm, and they confirmed that our language and how we're doing it is accurate. Well, I have to be honest with you. Mike gave me this story on the phone earlier today, and I was like, a difference without a distinction in my mind. But as I'm looking at this, yes, we can have one-on-one -on -one phone calls, Mr. Bean. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> no, just to be recognized after this is done, pro proposing this. You want to ask me a question? Or? No, sir. Okay. Just uh, but now, as I'm listening to him, I do, I do see the distinction. Yeah. Understood. And uh, just as an aside, while the formula may or may not be correct, it's certainly subject to question. Your arithmetic is wrong. <laughs> uh, for 14, anyway. That actually doesn't total up to uh, 996. It turns out to be 997. Excel rounds. Because there are, within the other number, there well, are some Well, the one article is showing the rounded numbers should be added up as rounded numbers, so it should be seven. Rhythmatically speaking, to be consistent. Or symmetrical, I prefer. I'll yield to Mr. Bean. Now, Nick, what has the end up first? Uh, good evening, Jamie. Mine was just a quick clarification on Article 15. Um, 2018, the number kind of jumps to 37, whereas the year before was 14,199. Why the jump? Um, I, without looking at the spreadsheet <coughs> closer, I can't answer that. Christy? Uh, the jump, uh, I guess, would be people hit the steps. I don't know. Steps. steps. Yeah. yeah. It's just something that's yeah, about no, me no, because I'm with 14, you. it was kind of close, but that's a kind of like over a double, so I didn't yep, know I'm if with there you. was I'll go back and look at that spreadsheet. Absolutely. It. That's all. If yeah. there's an amendment, we'll come see you tomorrow on it. Yeah, just for the next yeah, time yeah, we yeah. discuss this yeah. in public, just to uh, have an explanation for that. That was all I had, Madam Chair. Thank, Thank you. you. Bill, did you want to speak to this? No, ma'am, I've answered my own question. Thank you. Would you like to share that with us? Bob. I applaud your efforts surrounding the Affordable Care Act Cadillac tax. Was the same attention paid to cost sharing under the deductibles and co payments or medical plans? Cost sharing and co pays. Um, there's always discussion. But uh, our plans, there's, there's um, I guess the short answer is no. Our plans have very set, there's a, a myriad of plans that they can choose that vary their deductibles based on how much they're going to pay and we're going to end up paying as well as what we offer. They've been on the on the table for many, many years. We absolutely have discussion about that and one of the ways to deal with the Cadillac tax is to look at those additional plans. Too. So as of this, we hadn't made any changes to plans beyond what was done previously. Uh, we dealt with the Cadillac tax only. We absolutely have discussions about where we're going because everybody sees the cost going. <coughs> but we did not change any plans at this point in time. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> I have another question. If I'm going into the booth and going to vote, I would like to know how much of an increase is this three-year agreement going to be to my current, what I currently pay out? Like 15 is my baseline. Okay. It's, it represents the total dollars that we're paying out for the folks in this particular article. After your three and a half years or whatever, three years and the 13 weeks, those increases are going to come up to a new sum. What, what is that new sum? How much of an increase in percentage over 15 is that new sum? Don't have that answer for you right now, Jerry. Uh, I would, I would, that would be a figure that I would be looking for if I was a voter. Because if you told me it was 15 or 20 percent, I would do a backflip. I mean, I don't know. As I sit here, neither do I. So, I mean, we, I want to know, I want to compare my current baseline to the total of this agreement when it's over with. To see if I can live with the impact. 
That's my only point. Good. I, I ran the numbers, you know, and it's, it, I don't have a percentage change, but it's 679,000. Yeah. In other words, almost the total. And, what, and if you divide it by the, I don't know what our baseline is today. I don't know. So that's 679 if you add, as Mike was suggesting, the 110 to 72, the 114 to the 110 to the yeah, 72, take, the 20. Yeah. Did yeah. I take yep. 16, 17, yep. 18, and 19? That sounds I, about that I, sounds about what the math we were, we were understanding it to be as well. Yeah. So the additional cost instead of 323, 996 would be a flat 679 even. Again, I'm not going to speak exactly to that without finance. 7 is what I got. Just oh. that's in round numbers. Just yeah. 29, oh, 27, oh. six. Six seven nine zero two seven. Did you do the same thing on the next one? Because we're looking at both of them the same thing. Yeah, with the problem. So, but still, I'm not, I'm looking for how does that impact me? Right. Yeah. From a baseline <coughs> point of view, from baseline to you know the baseline of where I am in 15 mm -hmm. to where I end up in you know uh, 13 weeks and 19. Yeah. Okay. What increased and how much of an increase was that with respect to my baseline? Right. Not I know. I need to know. Yeah. All right, Tim. No, I was looking up uh, Mark mm -hmm. Sandborn and the Municipal Association's website. I assume you would agree that this is applicable to this discussion. Uh, it, it depends. Each of these cases have a lot of different factors. Yeah. As I understand the Sandborn one, that involved a evergreen clause, which is a totally different kettle of fish. That was Alton. Alton was the evergreen clause. Well, the, the, the Sandborn, as I understand it, well, I got uh, it right here. sets forth the... Uh, more or less the principle, but how you apply it is another kettle of fish. The statutes, as they each of these cases quote that, simply say the cost item is submit, submitted to the legislative committee. Sanborn says you have to give the, war, the voters fair warning. Another one of the cases says you don't have to be exact, but you have to give a fair idea. And when you look at it, it that's why we go to outside counsel, because there are multiple cases besides the one you're just talking about which, which apply this, and, and I've not found any of them that precisely say this is how you do it, because they each involve their own little factors. But common among all those is the fair representation of the cost, basically, to the voter. That's, that's the uh, principle that Sanborn enunciates, but how you actually word an article, not much guidance. Okay. I well, the Sanborn case was a Supreme Court case. It upheld the validity of multi collective bargaining agreements, which comprehensively, comprehensively governs public employee governing or bargaining process. The statute provides that once an agreement is reached between employer okay. board and the union, the quote cost items close quote of the agreement of the agreement defined as quote any benefit arrives through the collective bargaining whose implementation requires an appropriation by the legislative body of the public employer with whom the negotiations are being conducted. Now, even though a prior, you know, like if you take uh, 20, uh, you keep saying the, the, these agreements say X amount over the prior year. That's, that's the, the, when we consulted with outside counsel. Right, I understand that. was that. the way they yeah, said, this the is the way to do it. The, the Sanborn case <coughs> involved the validity or not of multi-year contracts at all. That was the case that says, yes, you can have multi-year contracts. Yeah, and it also said that it, it must, it, it, and it quotes the case. It seems okay. it, 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 and it's amazing. Actually, the, the definition you just read quotes the statute, again, for the definition of cost items. But again, in terms of how it plays out that's on right. paper. Quotes the statute, that's correct. Yeah. It, again, it doesn't, I, I know, because I read it too. The, the problem is, it doesn't tell you how to do it. It doesn't tell you how to warn them. No, it does, but it does say, mm -hmm. and, and I think there's a key point, it does say that it must be revealed to the legislative body, and in our case, being a town, the legislative body is town meeting, right? Sure. That means the voter. So it must be disclosed to the voter, effectively, anything that requires an appropriation, right? Yeah, and that, that, okay, that's, so that's then, the, then the issue is, well, what, does, what requires an appropriation? Yeah, and now, that, what, what, what Jamie was saying earlier was he's not including a running total because that will be in the budget. Right. And, and, and the point is, is the budget itself requires an appropriation. The, the, funny thing so, about, the, the funny thing about it, if you think about it, is this article, where, the only thing that's actually appropriated in this article is the first year. Actually, the 2016 year. Right. right. The rest comes in subsequent years uh, with actually 
the appropriation is within the budget. It becomes part Thank of the you. budget automatically. Yeah, but the budget itself is an appropriation. It is an appropriation, right. yes. So therefore, it's, a, it's the appropriation from the budget and it's an appropriation from that new contractual year. That's why they need to be add, added together. Well, it, that, unfortunately, you don't find a case that tells you that. Well, I'm not looking for a case that tells me that. I'm just saying from what I've again, seen yes. here. Unfortunately, it's not in, it's not in the statute. So you, well, that's I, I don't want to argue the point. I'm just saying what I'm seeing here. I understand, yeah. And, and the result is that when, when this situation occurs and it's challenged in court, the people who suffer are the, are the, are the union members because their raise is denied because there was not a sufficient appropriation as a consequence of not having sufficient notice. So the risk of Mike's point being correct you're absolutely right. Is not on the taxpayer, but actually on the employ the the union employees. It's on both, actually. But you're absolutely right. Well, it's on us in because the there's litigation. The case, yeah. I just want to be hyper clear on something I indicated to your question before. The DRA has so far only approved the uh, Teamsters language, which is exactly the same mathematics and same language. But I just want to be clear because these were approved Monday. They're up there now. I misspoke on the total. So the two police, two fire at DRA now, but Teamsters has already been approved. So as I see it, Mike, as I see it, Mike, I think your, your point is well taken, unlike my earlier view of your point. You explained it better now than you did on the phone, by the way. But in any case, I don't see the risk being on the taxpayer. Well, he might be buying a pig and a poke. I mean, he might no, be buying no, no, something no, he no. thinks he's buying. No, no, no. If, 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 if it's challenged... If, if it loses, balance, the, the raises will be denied to the employer because of the lack of disclosure to the voter. The voter will not be harmed. That's the point. Let me make... But, of course, it would have to be challenged to avoid that harm. Let me ask this very simple question. If we were to collect $323,996 to fund all that needs to be covered in this warrant article, would we run shot? Absolutely. Sure would. You, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah. because again, <laughs> but, but again, there what we're go. showing that's you is what the language is showing over the level, over the level, over the level. I mean, if that's the proof of the pudding, right? Yeah, there. Minus a dollar. That that would be my only problem with. Oh, thereabouts. There you go. <laughs> is that if we if we represent this and vote for this? What I can tell you is we we vetted all of this. We went to outside council who looked at it and felt that this was an appropriate way to go. We we went with that advice. You know, I don't know what to tell you other than that, ma'am. I think we ought to make a motion. This is going on for an hour. I know. I, know. I just want to add one comment, if I may. All right, one from you, one from Sonny. Please make them brief so we can take okay. this to a vote. I'm just saying, uh, Chief, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Jamie, uh, uh, Jamie Sullivan. Mr. Jamie Sullivan, I'm not used to that, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying here to the voters, if they go in and read it in the booth, 32396, and we just figured out in reality it's really 660,274. To me, that's a total misrepresentation to the voters. So no. I cannot support this one outcome because it's faulty. Thank you. So noted. Sonny. Yeah. I've had negotiations with unions when I was in the corporate business. I think you did a great job. I mean, if we, if the unions were listening to this discussion now, I think you know, they'd open some issues for the next negotiation. So I think you did a great job. Yeah, I think what we're talking about here is the notice and the language no, having nothing understand. to do with the negotiation. It's how we're right. going to notice this, which is a separate issue from those discussions. Before we vote on this, Ken, is there a remedy to legally change this? Well, the, I Mr. The, 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 quite the, 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 the thing of it is, um, when the cost figure goes, the cost figure, as I understand it, can't be changed at the deliberative session. Cannot. <coughs> and we are How past. The, excuse me, one minute, Tim. We are past the window for changing warrant articles as of five o'clock last night. This is another one of those unfortunate situations where this warrant article from what I can see that now faces a jeopardy because it was written incorrectly. Well, that's, 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 that's not that's according, that's according to That's well, what you know the what? discussion here, again, we have gone through Your outside council. Committee, if you can't DRA fund has this also done that. I mean, then... Motion to get on with it. 
Have we made a motion to, to, to look at these two yet? I can't remember. Oh, I would like to make a motion that we take Article 14. Uh, Mr. Mr. Bean has Bean his arm um, in the... Thank you, Madam here. Chair. Um, Assistant Town Manager, uh, Town Council. You've got one contract you say was vetted by DRA? Correct. The math you use to develop your costs going forward to the subsequent years in the vetted contract by DRA, is that the same math that you used for police and fire or the other two? Same Art math. Article 16. May, I, may I just have the floor, please? Okay. Correct. Thank you. So we would have a reasonable suspicion that what lies in way from DRA, they don't assess costs for one union differently than another, that their math will apply equally to your other two contracts that you have for review. That would be my belief. That's what I wanted to make my point earlier. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. <laughs> I have no reason to believe that DRA even added those numbers up. Because of the dollar. And oh, which contract no did DRA that, did. excuse me? Teamsters. Teamsters. The three-year deal for the Teamsters. So they have not Which done is exactly the same setup as this. And again, to point out, the math that you're looking at is precisely the same math that has been passed with other contracts here previously. The exact same way of calculating that over three-year deals. Correct. Okay. Madam Chair. Yep. I just, <clears throat> I got to say, as, as a voter going into the booth, I wouldn't be confused over this. You would or you would not? I would not. I, I think it, I think it spells it out. I mean, what, what this is telling me by reading this is that in, in 2016, it's going to be $72,616 over the 2015 level. Well, we know then that that is into the next year's budget already. Mm -hmm. And then the increase is going to represent $110,583. And if I follow that logic reading, I'm going to know that that 110 drops in automatically, and now we're going to add 114,445. I don't see the confusion on this. I will agree with you that if I take those lines, I'm not confused. Where the confusion comes in, and this was on the insistence of voters in the past, that the total be given, the total is incorrect. So no, if we could, if that last line didn't exist or could be amended, I have absolutely no problem. But from what I'm hearing, it's not different. I, I mean, I, I think the assistant town manager is telling us that they're using the same math that they've used in previous years. Yes. In the same statement. Am I, am I correct? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I said the town manager, <clears throat> assistant town manager, appears to be telling us that the same math has been used in previous years to reflect how much is being used each year and the collective number on the bottom. But so you're telling me that in last year's, or in, on the last uh, CBA that you put together, <coughs> it was the same formula you? Um, i just checking with the finance director who did the math. And, and I'll have to tell you that I can't answer that right now. Okay. We have to go back and confirm that. Okay. If, okay. If, if, and you, if, if it is my belief that that's the case, we have to go so. back. If, okay. if you want. And I've the, asked if we only collected three hundred and twenty-three thousand, and the rest of it, could we fund all the conditions of this? And well, the answer has been no. I understand that, so, but I, I think I, I think we're dealing in semantics a little bit. If, well, if, if you know that the seventy-two thousand from one year is into the budget for the next year. I, I understand, Jim. I'm going, I'm, you've got me on the top part. Well, no, but it deals with the bottom part yeah, also. Yeah, but that's where there's a disconnect, okay, because that 323 will not fund all the terms that are written on, on top. Matt, Madam Chair, I think the selectmen could, by the date of the deadline for them to post the warrant mm -hmm. for the deliberative session, <coughs> could change the explanation to say the total of the above Cost is blank. The three twenty three nine ninety six is what? The, they could say the total of the above costs is three twenty three nine ninety six. So you're saying they can amend? <coughs> they can. They can amend it. They can. Can that be done by tomorrow night? Uh, not without a meeting, it. but uh, huh? Well, uh, I suggest they have a meeting. I, I move. We can't notice a meeting in time. 
for that. That's right. You know, I was looking at uh, Article 12 of 2014, how that article was written for uh, a wage increase for the Teamsters. Yeah. And they took everything, right. this was for, uh, these were for 14, 15, and 16, and they took everything with, with respect to 13. The first two years were taken with respect to 13, and the third year with respect to 15. And the grand total was? And the grand total was right in here per RSA 273A, the total additional cost of the agreement for salaries and benefits over the 213 budget level for two years was 56785 so, so do the math on those first two, Jerry. What is that? What does the first two math show up? Does it add to the fifty-six, or a different? Uh, the the two thousand and fourteen for thirty-nine weeks was fifteen thousand eight thirty-nine. Yep. For two thousand and fifteen, it was thirty-two oh thirty. So that's fifty-six. Fifty-six. So it was noticed exactly as this. And three. for two thousand and sixteen, it was again for thirteen weeks for eight thousand nine one seven. So it was done just like that. The total, yeah. the total yeah. cost was fifty six seven eighty five. So it's so just like this. Just like this. Just like this. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have your total cost showing? I'm ready I guess you do down here. Yeah. But I, I agree with what you're saying, Mike. You need your whole role. Is everybody ready to vote? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. We've got Phil. Dick. Scott, Jim, Sonny. I'm sorry, Sonny, and Bob, Nose, Nose again, Pam, right, I got Mike, Brian, Jerry, and Mike, four, and very rarely do this, but I'm going to abstain. Tim? I am joining you, Madam Chair. Two abstentions. So it passes by 642. So moving on to the Teamsters, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, the Teamsters, there were a couple of issues we went through. The first dealing with the recognition clause over a period of time. There were some positions that were originally in the union's uh, bargaining uh, agreement and were included that over some time came out and no one could identify the reasons why in order to legally do that there's a process that has to happen it didn't so what we did is recognize basically their original group um, so that we're compliant but what we're going to do is several of those union are currently not covered by the union over time for some reason and no one can explain why they came out so what we're going to do is appropriately recognize those in the future as those positions come open we'll repost them as union positions no real change in anything else um, there was some language change in their disciplinary procedure the disciplinary procedure is uh, just a couple of things language wise they were concerned with we made some adjustments we felt were reasonable um, bereavement leave this is a section that actually surprised all of us as we talked about it um, we added son and daughter-in-law which were not part of bereavement leave if you should have your son or daughter-in-law pass away you can have a one day off bereavement we have you know mother and father-in-law but not son and daughter we thought it was a reasonable thing um, section four deals with um, really a reimbursement issue an issue for folks who they're again a teamsters is a group that represents a wide variety of employees some in the police department town hall some in public works so there's quite a group of folks here this deals with the folks in public works who um, get stuck in or get called in or I'm sorry who are held in for emergencies and their issue that brought up the table was hey, if we're in um, and we're in for our normal eight-hour day our meal is on us if we get held in over four hours over our, you know, for a snow emergency, for an emergency, <laughs> we don't have the ability to pack another lunch or do anything like that. They were looking for uh, a reimbursement following what we do with if you, you're on a meal out of town. We looked at the numbers. They're relatively small as it stands right now. Most often the director provides something, there's food. So we've added language that one of two things will happen. There'll be food provided, or if not, we'll follow that meal reimbursement that we do if you're out of town on training. Again, relatively small dollars the number of times that occurs. Uh, health insurance change was exactly as we did with the police, uh, both in the opt-out provisions as well as in the um, Cadillac tax language. Same intent dealing with those folks. Um, their wage differential now is uh, two and a half, three and three. 
And I'll say the reason for that is there are a couple of adjustments in their salary schedule that were substantially underpaid compared to their peer groups upon research. Um, a couple of them is the police dispatchers, um, a couple of the secretary positions. So those wages were adjusted. And in addition, um, there are the Board of Selectmen has approved uh, the creation, or I should say the reclassification of two positions at a different wage rate. That is, uh, to take a secretary in the building department, make them an operations person, um, and in the public works department, to create a general foreman from the foreman position. That foreman position currently, um, there's a, several spots. It's moved to a general foreman who can oversee numerous areas. Those come with wage changes. If that's approved, those folks will move to those. Um, it's a three-year deal, two and a half, three, three. That's essentially that contract now. The costing you see in front of you, same discussion that we've gone through. It's priced precisely the same way. Again, for reiteration, uh, DRA has, in fact, seen this language and has approved this language. Has seen this one. Okay. All right. I'll, uh, I'll move Article 16. I'll second, second it. Any discussion? Yeah. No? I think, I think both these articles are in trouble. I think police and, and uh, the Teamsters, uh, three, three, and three, and two and a half, three, and three. The CPI is less than one for 2015, 2015. And with the average pay increase in the United States is about 2% for the year. Two and a half, three and three, and three, three and three are going to run into trouble, I believe. And I'll put out some of the discussion I heard here when the teachers came in. Some of those teachers on average are making four and a quarter for that Cadillac tax division stuff. So um, we felt, based on the discussions, these were reasonable numbers. The teachers are in a step. A step, so a grid step, folks. been in place for 10, 15 years. A grid step of 3.75. They got a 0.5 percent increase over that, so for a total of four. That was made publicly transparent. And the old, for those teachers yep. who are over the top end, they got 1.75, 1.75, 1.75, 1.75. If majority, they're at the top end or over. Majority so, were in 1.7. Yeah. Um, so, 1. and the more two thirds of them are at the top end or over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there it is. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to. Uh, discuss on that point of uh, the cost of living increase, uh, real estate costs in this uh, area uh, far exceed the national increases. Uh, they're going up four or five percent a year. Daycare, uh, the, uh, the price to um, uh, do everything in this town far exceeds uh, the CPI. I wanted to disabuse uh, both the public, uh, this body, uh, and those that would be opposed to giving uh, success to these uh, ratified agreements. That, uh, that's a notion that has any merit because I don't know who's making numbers up about the COLA. Uh, there's been some disbelief about what DRA is capable of doing tonight, and I would assert that uh, the cost of living in Hampton uh, far exceeds by three, four, five hundred percent uh, the number that Mr. Zanoy just brought out. Uh, these <coughs> contracts are in line with that. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to add just one thing to what Mr. Bean has said. Um, we realize that there are some incomes in Hampton that do exceed and that the cost of living is out there. However, this is the first time in a very long time that seniors and the disabled and anybody on Social Security is seeing a big goose egg zero. for an increase. Yep. Absolutely zero. So I hear what everybody is saying. We live day to day, all of us, on the increases that come and go. but those most burdened with costs and those who are on fixed livings and have no ability to many times enhance their living are seeing absolutely no increase whatsoever this year. So and I would add back that one of the points in our discussions here is the six years that our employees went with nothing, mm -hmm. zero. So we believe that at this time, as wages during that period of time stayed, there were both of these unions gave concessions on the health care in their last contract negotiation and in this one. We believe that's of value to the community. We believe it has value. So we represented that six years without a pay raise is still a reality to these employees who still are here working hard, doing a great job every day for this community as well. We believe you look at it over that long period, and I'm sure there's going to be more discussion on this to come. 
but absolutely felt these are reasonable numbers. Some of these people, and, and you're right, Jamie, I mean, for those of us who sat here, and not all of you did during those years, they were painful trying to put these contracts through and having them turned down year after year after year after year. And yet we have already put through some pieces of the budget where people are asking for 10 percent in one year as a catch up. <coughs> so it's difficult. It seems like you never do catch up. Some adjustments do have to be made. I just worry about it in a year when I, when I say that a portion of our population out there is seeing nothing. Um, yeah, and, and again, I, we're going to have longer discussions on these issues. What I will say is, again, keep in mind the concessions that were gained through this, that if that takes effect and you don't have those protections in the future, if that, keep in mind that there's a lot going on here than just a number. Don't get locked in on one thing. Mm -hmm. We believe these are reasonable numbers. What's the value of what we're, we're, we're asking our employees to concede? We did. They did. Uh, we think that these are reasonable numbers. Yeah. All right. Quick comments and then a vote. Yeah. Just a quick comment. I'm on Medicare, obviously. And the CPI, the way the, the Congress wants it figured, you end up with a zero percent. For example, but Part D, the, the RX, the prescription, the way the law reads, the government can't, Medicare can't negotiate the price of drugs. So even though my Medicare didn't, the premium for the insurance didn't go up, the, health, the prescription drug cost went up 25 percent. All right. So if you don't like what's happening, you've, you've got an election coming up, and I can suggest how you can vote. Thanks. Michael? Um, yeah, I was looking. This, this has the same problem with the, you know, you wouldn't be able to finance this thing as per the total there in that bottom line. Same problem as we had on the other two contracts, and I'm not going to discuss that because we beat that to death. But you said adjustments in some of these uh, reclassification of some of the employees. Yes, sir. What was what was the highest wage increase for some of those? Or just give us a couple of examples. Sure. Going from the lowest to the highest. Um, let's see. Off the top of my head, I don't have it right in front of me. I, I think want to there say some that six the, percenters on there. Um, no, I don't think. Well, again, I have to go back and look to be sure. I want to say that the secretaries went from um, like 14 and change to 16, what we're paying our part-time non-union secretaries. That's the wage change there. Um, for the, um, I think the highest you'll find is the change in the general foreman's position. Right. And I want to say, again, I, I'm going to pull a number. I want to say that first year, it's like $2,500, $2, give or take, is the raise for that first year, moving to that additional position. Are those, I think, are the high and the low of the changes. So in this contract versus the others, there's a lot more of this adjustment, as you call it, as I said, they were for personnel than there is in the fire and police. Yes, yes. This by far. And I was trying to weed my way through it, and it's kind of difficult if you're not directly involved like you were to sort of follow that. But I got the impression, okay, the impression, that there were some significant increases in the pay because of this reclassification or whatever you call it. Yeah, and as I indicated, there were several positions that their pay was adjusted because they were well below their peer group. Those were adjusted. They're still on the low end for the peer group. But on the other two reclassifications, yes, there's a change in duties and a change in um, if it passes in, in those wages as well. No, and I have one other remark, and that's how I feel about the two and a half, three, three. Um, I can honestly say as a good paying taxpayer, and I paid taxes last year on two houses because I was in the process of moving, that was pretty steep. And because my pension, which is flat, doesn't get any COLAs, and everybody knows what they did for Social Security, so the more you pay uh, in taxes, the less you get to spend on groceries, that's for sure. And like somebody else said, even the medic, uh, the prescriptions are going up. I mean, what I, I can remember about oh, six or eight years ago, a very prominent person in Hampton said, well, if you can't afford Hampton, move out. That's what they said to the, me complaining about the cost of stuff going up. And I really don't want to move, but I think that uh, there was a lady up the street on my ex where I lived before 
at Heb on Heaven Avenue, she at the end of the street, she said she couldn't afford the taxes, so she's moving. She didn't want to move, but she's moving. Um, I don't know where else she could move in New Hampshire, but I, another thing that bothers me along the same line, we're talking about the increased cost for employees if they live in Hampton. That's a qualifier because we have quite a few people that don't live in Hampton. I mean, I can think of several in management and quite a few employees that are involved with these contracts don't live in Hampton at all. They live in another community because the real estate prices are lower. So. Okay. Bob, and then Tim. Uh, one thing you said really impressed me. If you ask your help to go for six years without any raise, at some point the community owes its help and some kind of revision to the mean. If you take the 3% and subtract either, say, 12% for the six years they didn't get a 2% raise, it's a net 9% gain for the community. That's a pretty good trade, mathematically. Good point. All right, Tim? I didn't get the point, but okay. So you go over your head? <laughs> yeah, or under somewhere. I'm not sure which. I would suggest that this conversation is one that's widely going to go on the floor and in town to March. People have ideas of what they're doing. Again, I would just focus on this was what the board and our direction was. Keep in mind the value to the future of that Cadillac tax hits. This protects the future of those ever-increasing numbers, and that's a value that folks need to pay attention to as well. So we felt it was a reasonable resolution, and that's what we will, we will continue to tell the public. I appreciate the negotiation work, Chief. I did. Um, and I'm kind of hung up on the numbers we were dealing with earlier. So I had to go back in time and more on article history here. And I'm looking at 2012 when you were slacking, Mr. Pierce. And there was no total in these uh, union contracts at all back then. No total? No. Well, they. In fact, that all it refers to is the first year's cost in terms of it does list the, the first year, the second year, et cetera. But it says, and to further raise and appropriate the sum of the first year's cost. It doesn't even talk about appropriating subsequent years. And I'm wondering, you know, you know, why we might have changed that template, if anyone knows, to, because I think the problem is actually in the total appropriation. I think that's where we're at right now, yeah. Yep. yeah. I think you'd have How you other represent other that. going the yep. other And I way. said, it as I say, that could, uh, in light of the discussion, that selectman could change the wording of that. And when would they do would that? Would you anticipate some consultation taking place along those lines? Uh, that's very possible. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and would we then subsequently have a chance to vote on any subsequent modification as a board, as a committee? Well, it... it uh, well, you, you've you taken votes before at the deliberative session, haven't you? You can at the yeah. end of the deliberative session. So... I can't. I really can't like support it because of that confusion, and I can't really oppose it either because there's not a risk on the taxpayer, which is why I abstain. But I don't particularly like abstaining on it. So, uh, thank you for that additional information to further support my abstentions. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chairman, I'd like to make a comment about what Mr. Ladd said about them going six years without a contract. That's very true, and I happened to be there on the board of selectmen when they finally come to terms, and those contracts they agreed to. After six years of drought, there was adjustments made for that consideration, the fact that, that they were out of contracts for six years. They were generous of that department. It was step the, consideration, the, wasn't it? They, no, it's, it's with any settled contract that, that when you settle, people go on to the steps that, that, that in the status quo, they don't move forward. Right. By law, they have to move to their appropriate steps when it happens. It wasn't a concession, it's a reality. They would have to move. So, I mean, a part of that agreement was covered them pretty well, considering that they never got anything passed for the six years. That wasn't the selectmen's fault that didn't pass. That was the voters voted the no, agreements. No, I don't say whose fault was it. I mean, I'm, I don't think you can label it. I think the voters looked at it and they said no. Yeah. They didn't get steps for six years, which was I think vote. we're at a point that we <coughs> know it's on the table and it's time to take a vote right, on it's, it. It's just All those in favor. All right, Phil, Nick, Scott, Jim, Brian, Sonny, again over in the corner. Bob, those opposed, Michael, Michael, and Jerry, 
And abstentions? I'm a strong abstention here. Yeah. <laughs> if that could be remedied, I could be. I could be far if vote. the wording was. So know, noted. Corrected. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.